Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today, but before we begin, if you're new here, if you have no idea what this is about, welcome. If you are returning, be sure to subscribe, turn on those alerts, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at sketchday.com or, well not or, in addition to that I want you to sign up for my newsletter and that's where I'm going to be sharing helpful tips eventually, um, possibly some exclusives, and you'll be the first to know about anything interesting exciting that's happening. So today we're actually not going to be drawing, I'm going to be talking about something, something that's important to me and something that I feel like has helped me a lot throughout sketching and that is learning to do things the hard way. Now I know it sounds counterintuitive, but when I was a student, I was actually transitioning from being a math major, imagine that, to a design major. And one of the important things as a designer is being able to communicate uh, using visual communication tools in the best way possible. And I was inspired by my professor at the time and his sketchbook and his techniques, and I was thinking to myself, I wanna be as good as this guy. Well, if you want to be good at anything, setting goals, milestones are all important and giving yourself challenges, things that will push you to grow. It's a lot like running a race, marathon, whatever the case may be, maybe you're doing something that's comfortable and you push yourself a little bit more. So today I'm talking about tools. What I mean by tools for designers, for, for illustrators, artists, whatever, things like guides, rulers, um, things that can assist you in your drawing, but it's important to be aware and careful that you don't become dependent on these tools. And so that's the first thing I want to touch on is tools sometimes can be a crutch. I've come across people from time to time who are um, visual artists, designers, whatever, and they do really good stuff. Um, but when you take those tools away, things just kind of fall apart. So for me, I never wanted to have that dependency, that crutch, that reliance on something that I may not have with me all the time. Now, if you're enterprising and maybe creative, you could bring those tools with you everywhere you go. These are my ellipse templates. I've had these since college. Mm, they still smell like college. And I don't ever use them. <laughs> I probably should. You know, I look back at sketches sometimes. I'm like, oh, that ellipse is wonky. But one of the things that I promised myself and challenged myself to do when I was learning to draw was to be as good as possible with the tools I was born with, and that is my hands. So it really doesn't matter what I draw with, I'm trying to practice to be better at executing, much like this ellipse template guide and circle template guide will, um, those perfect ellipses and circles. So that's why it's important to warm up and to practice every day. So not only do you want it to not be a crutch, How's that for double negative? You don't want to have a crutch, something you have to rely on. Um, but in addition to that, I think tools sometimes can put us in a mental or psychological space that makes us feel insecure about our own abilities. So by practicing, by dedicating yourself to being better with what you have, it actually builds your confidence. And that confidence will show in your sketches as opposed to relying on the tool. Um, tools tend to slow me down personally. So if I'm trying to find the 80 degree ellipse or 30 degree or whatever, um, that's going to take extra time that I may not have as opposed to just quickly sketching or drawing that idea on paper as best I can. So I like to be ready to execute at a high level at any, at any point. If I'm having a conversation with a client, if I'm in a meeting, whatever, I know that I can execute uh, well. The other thing and my, my final point about tools, guides, assisted, um, drawing aids and it's it's become even wilder <laughs> if, you, if you can call it that um, with digital tools things like procreate when you're drawing it'll actually snap your stroke to an ellipse or a straight line there's perspective guides all this good stuff I do believe in being good at the fundamentals being able to do it without those tools first um, because the tools only amplify your abilities um, rather than hindering them so the last point though is that because tools are so perfect and rigid, it can actually suck the humanity out of your drawings and out of your sketches. And I've seen this as well, where a drawing just kind of gets too rigid. It, it loses the life and the excitement and 
For me, I much prefer drawings that have an emotive quality to them. Now, there are designers and artists who are good at maintaining that balance, but if you're just learning, my recommendation to you today would be to leave the tools, get rid of them, and focus on the fundamentals. Focus on giving yourself a challenge that will push and stretch you, that will help you develop those skills and those abilities in a way that you won't need to rely on those tools, those aids, if you will. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully this was beneficial to you in some way. And if it was, definitely subscribe, tell a friend. And if it wasn't, still subscribe, tell a friend, and leave a comment below. I want to know what your favorite tools are, what things are challenging to you, and what you're doing to overcome those challenges. Okay? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Sketch It